to use the RSI to swing trade. Now, currently we're looking at the, the built-in RSI, which is what is available on DYDX. But for this tool, we're going to we're going to have to get this indicator on TradingView. So the built-in version that is currently used on um, DYDX won't be able to get this indicator for us. So we have to have TradingView to the side when we're trading, and then we can get this indicator now. What you can see here is the typical RSI, the built-in RSI, which has a period of 14, and it has the top and bottom levels of 70 and 30, and the middle level of 50. And the way they typically teach you to use this is to look for the price to go above or above the 70 level, and then to look for to, that that's considered as over overbought, and we're looking for shorts, and then below the 30 level down here is considered as oversold, and we're looking for longs. Now the problem with this is that if you look at this, if we were to just trade these, it doesn't necessarily help us too much. If we look at this one down here, if you had to gone long here, that wouldn't have helped. Had it gone long here, that would have helped. But you know, we don't know whether it's this one or this one. Um, if you're coming up here, we're coming here. If you were up here and you went short, that wouldn't have worked out too well. If you went short there on that one, you would have got a little bit of a move. But again, it wouldn't have worked too well. If you had gone short here, that wouldn't have worked too well. If you went short here, you can see it, it's doesn't doesn't always work out so well in your favor. So what we want to try and do is pinpoint the tops and the bottoms and the moves and the momentum a little better. And what we do is we use another RSI indicator which has been developed, which is a great tool, and it provides us with a, a, a point where we can see the change in the momentum. Because just because it's above the 50 or below the 50, it still doesn't help us to see whether or not the momentum is, is moving up or down. You know, like it can be below the 50 level and the m momentum can still be going down. It can be below the 30 level and the momentum can still be going down. So we need to be able to see this. And what we do is we use this other ind indicator here that looks like this. And to get this indicator, we simply click on indicators and we want to use the TMA divergence indicator here. You'll see this one here. And now this indicator that I'm using is the smooth divergence indicator, which has a period of 40 period. This one is a 14 period. Some people use a six period. The, the longer the period, the longer you're going to see, the longer moves we're going to capture. The shorter the period, the shorter term moves we're going to capture. Okay, so some, some traders might use a six period RSI and they might get the really short term moves, but we, we want to look for longer swing moves. So we want to capture the entire move. The, the most important thing is that you'll see here is this blue line. Now this is the 100 moving average. And this is what gives us this point of reference to determine whether the momentum is changing up or down. Now if we use this, if I expand out a little bit here. By the way guys, before we do this, I'll just run through the settings quickly with you so you can get these settings right. Once you've installed this, if you click on the settings section here. Now we go to inputs. You're going to see the oscillator selection is through. It'll it'll come with default, it'll, and by default it'll be on the RSI divergence. We want to use the smooth divergence, okay? And we change the floating 50 color to blue if you want it to look like mine. I have the oscillator with it with at to set at two. I use the look back period 15 and the right period three. This will help you see the divergences if you if you want it to show them to you. And I'm just using regular for the for the purpose of today's tutorial. You can change it to both or just hidden if you want to see the hidden divergences as well. Um, and the smooth divergence settings, you just leave everything else how it is. It's currently 40 period and 100 period for the moving average line, which is what we want to see. You can go here and you can get rid of all these shapes. You don't need to see any of those. And I just have the, the 50 line and the 70 and the 30 in the middle. The 70 and the 30 is the top and the bottom levels. Now keep in mind these 70 and 30 levels I like to use are a little bit more extreme. They're probably more equivalent to sort of seeing the 80 and 20 level or the 90 and 10 level on the typical 14 period RSI. Okay, so it'll, it'll give you a better reference as to when the price is more likely to possibly reverse as well. Now what we want to look for is we really want to look for when the price is crossing up above this line for longs or below this line for the shorts, okay? So if we were to do that here, you will quite quickly see that this point here was where it crossed up. Okay, you can see it there. And this candle on the charts 
is right there where that would have happened. Okay, so you would have, you could have taken a long after this candle, put your short stop loss down about sorry your long stop loss down about here, and you would have captured this entire move perfectly. Okay, now the problem with that is that just trading based on when it blocks that block, uh, breaks the line like that is not always the best way to do it. It can be quite effective, but there's a there's something a better way to do it would be I, actually sometimes when it will break this line, I will take a trade. Put a, and try to get a break even stop loss on and just see if it can hold that. If it doesn't hold it and I get stopped out break even, that's fine because we haven't lost and you can just look for the next entry. But typically, once it's above the line, we're, 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 the momentum has changed and shifted up to the upside, okay? There's a good example here on the way back down. We can find the top here to show you another great way of using it, which I tend to try and do. Now, you'll see here it broke the line. Uh, right about here, we broke the line down. But what happened if you had have taken this trade up here? That would have been this candle right about here. You would have been stopped out, okay? You could have put it unless you had a quite a large uh, stop loss in place above this candle up here, the last swing high. You know, depending how much margin you're taking, you know, if you're using margin. That can be tricky. So you want to have your stops as tight as possible. I like to at least anyway. So even, there's a good chance you would have been stopped out with it with this with this entry. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to look for it bouncing down off the line. Okay. And this is a perfect example here of it bouncing down off the line. Now it went up and it bounced down a little bit before that. It can bounce up and down off the line perfectly, like you see it do just here. I'll just, I'll just put an arrow there so we can move that arrow to, to highlight this. But sometimes it may bounce up or down near the line. So it might be slightly below the line or slightly above the line. So what we want to do is look look for what happens when the momentum gets to the line, to the moving average, and, and just watch how it reacts to that, you know. We don't want to take it straight at the line because it can either it could go through the line and keep going up, you know. So you don't want to take a short if that happens. You want to wait and see how it reacts. And then take your trade, and that would have been, we wouldn't have known that bounce down happened until this candle here. So you see right here, if we had to taken the trade after this candle here, after we got that bounce down, that beautiful bounce down off the line, you you would you would have had this trade all the way down, and then this is likely to continue. You can see, we just hold it until we see the the break happen. So we can see it's still under the line. This is the gala chart, by the way, gala. Um, so we're seeing that this. Currently, the momentum is still to the downside. As long as we're below the blue line, we're still heading down, typically, okay? So you, you don't want to get out of these trades while you're above or below the line, depending on which way you, you're trading. So you can see here, for example, if you had to taken this long here, you'd hold this long, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And here, we came down to the line, okay? But you want to see what happens here at the line. It bounced up off the line, so you wouldn't sell it. you just hold the trade comes over here, comes down to the line again, but it bounces up off the line, so we stay in the trade. It's not until we see it break down through the line here that we exit the trade, okay? And then we came and we saw it bounce down off the line here and we wanna take the trade. Now you wanna be looking for coins that are moving up and down quite a lot. You don't wanna be doing this when, when the coin is sort of flat and trading sideways, that can be, that it won't work for you. You need to be looking for coins that have had quite a substantial move to the upside or a nice drop to the downside and then you look for the entry and that's where you get your best trades and that's essentially how we use this and it's a it's an easy great way to use the RSI indicator it'll help you find the the change in the momentum because without that that blue line and that that moving average level to, to go off you're sort of really just flying blind we have no way of seeing where that momentum is changing on, on the RSI without that point of reference so that's why I suggest using this tool it's a great indicator and it's by far for me personally the best the best way to use the RSI so I hope that helps and good luck